You're listening to MPS Connections with your host, AJ Hoffman. Welcome to MPS Connections with your host, AJ Hoffman. Uh, I am here with Emma and Vlad from, they are, Vlad's from Ukraine and Emma's from Germany. They are foreign exchange students. They both go to Dow High. Uh, how are you guys doing today? Good, good. good. How are so you? Far. Good. All right. Cool. It's nice. It was, it was in unison, like you're from the same country. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I want you each to tell me a little bit about where you're from. Uh, Emma, you want to start first? Sure. Um, I'm from Berlin, that's in Germany, <laughs> obviously, and yeah, Berlin is like Germany's capital, so I'm right from the city, but I live more in like the outside of Berlin, yeah. Okay, <laughs> all right, so it's like a, like a suburb or something of Berlin? Yeah, kind of. Okay, all right, were there, to be an exchange student, is there like a like a competition or anything like that? Or is it just, I'm ignorant of the whole program. How, how are you chosen or how um, did you get selected for it? So, I mean, I always wanted to do it. And it, I wouldn't say it was a competition, but I mean, you can decide by yourself if you want to do it or not. So it was not a competition, but I know other friends of mine were like trying to um, do it too. And they signed up for, um, I don't know what it's called, but like when you want to, like when you get it for free. Oh, a free education. Or like a scholarship. Study, right? Like a scholarship. Okay. Uh, cool. And that was kind of a competition because some of them got it, got them, some of them not. So, yeah. but for me and my friends, not really. It was a little bit sad because my best friend wanted to do an exchange year too. But they couldn't find a host family for her. Aww. So I went and she didn't. Or like, Aww. she went half a year later, so it was fine. But <laughs> what, Now, how does that work? Were you both planning to come to Midland then? or? Um, a lot of people, when I came here, asked me, why do you come to Midland? And I was like, um, I cannot choose. Yeah. Like, if you... <laughs> if you yeah. Same for me. If you... Um, what do you mean you can't choose? Like, it's, you don't get to choose, or they choose for you, or you just yeah. kind of threw it's, a dart at a map? Yeah, so it's usually randomly assigned mm-hmm. based off of where they can find your host family. So in my situation, it was found here in um, mid-Michigan area, and so that's how I ended up here. That was yeah. not my choice. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Um, but yeah, so uh, when it comes to me, I'm originally from Kharkiv, Ukraine. I was born and raised there. It's uh, the city in the eastern part of Ukraine. It's the second largest city in Ukraine, so I'm also like from a big city. Um, so moving to Midland was quite a drastic difference. I've always wanted to try like living in a smaller town kind of thing because I've never experienced that in my life. And uh, my scholarship program is very competitive. Um, I had to, I think I applied originally in like September of 2020, and then I went through several uh, steps of rigorous interviews and English proficiency tests and all of those typical things that you would see on college admissions. Um, The program we're on is called uh, Flex for Future Leaders Exchange Program, and it has an average acceptance rate of around 2.5%. So it is a great privilege to be here. Yeah. yeah but um, so in my case, it was very competitive to get the scholarship and come to the United States to study here. What was it that made you want to study here? Um, I think for my entire life, I really was so in, I've been very interested in seeing how different cultures live. And so I think to me, it really initially hadn't been that much of like specifically the U.S. It was more of like just trying to see a different community, a different country where I've never lived before. And it just happened so that there's this program funded by uh, the U.S. Department of State. And I was like, oh, that would be cool. And then um, just a totally different perspective. And I was like, I probably should go for it. And my one of my English teachers at school really encouraged me to apply to this scholarship. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to take a chance. And that was my last chance because that was my uh, junior year in Ukraine. And that's like the latest you can apply. And so I was like, okay, then I'm going to go for that challenge. And I did. And I got the scholarship and ended up in Midland, Michigan. <laughs> We're glad to have you. Thank you. Emma, what about you? What was it that made you want to study abroad? 
So seven years ago, my dad told me about his exchange year. And um, since then, I was like kind of impressed and wanted to do the same thing like my dad. And yeah, that's so cool. um, So basically, I was just, I don't know, I just always wanted to get out of my comfort zone and experience new things. So I was like, that's a great opportunity to do that. And yeah. So that's so, how I ended up here. Kind of runs in the family. Huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's very cool. Do you do you remember where your dad went? Did he come to the United States also or no? He told me all the time, but I never remember <laughs> the name. But he was. Uh, he told me he was more in the middle. Okay. I mean, Michigan is more on the right side and yeah. up. Yeah, they, they <laughs> kind of call Michigan like part of the Midwest, Midwest. but yeah. there's really more of a Midwest. Yeah, further down. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> further down, so we just kind of get lumped into that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, what do you think of Michigan so far, each of you? Um, I mean, it's a lot of diff- a lot different Quite. because yeah. we both came out of like a really big city into. I wouldn't say Midland is small, but it's quiet and it looks really innocent. <laughs> and, um, Berlin is like there are all kinds of people. Um, also, like, a lot of different cultures, and, yeah, so it was really different. An adjustment, yeah. Yeah. And I think, speaking of Michigan generally, I think it's a very beautiful state. I've enjoyed I got a chance to travel around Michigan quite a bit. I've been to the UP, um, some of the Great Lakes areas, and it is, it is so beautiful. The nature is just so, so beautiful here. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of like on the same page with Emma on, mm-hmm. you know, big city versus Midland. Um, it was just an adjustment. A funny thing is, so I used to live pretty close to like big main roads in Kharkiv. And so I am, I would open my window in the summer and, um, you know, I hear like highways, like noises and stuff like that. And here in Midland, I would open the window and I'd hear crickets and <laughs> I would, I would be so, like, they would be so distracting to me, and that sound, I would, like, I cannot fall asleep to that sound. Like, it's, I, I, I can't. And versus, like, if it was, like, an ambulance passing by or something like that, I'd be fine with that because I'm just used to that. Yeah. Uh, but, no, that's definitely an adjustment. And I think um, a big part of maybe not only Michigan but the U.S. generally that I've noticed is how important and how big emphasis on a community there is here. I wouldn't necessarily say that it wasn't the case in Kharkiv. Maybe I just didn't get a chance to experience that because I was still like, you know, in my early teen days. So like maybe I just wasn't as involved. But, you know, um, having such uh, great community events and having such great community organizations and, you know, it's great. And I think that this is one of the things that, you know, the U.S. culture puts a pretty big emphasis on that I have really, really enjoyed over the years. Gotcha. Now, this isn't on the script, but what what were some of the things that you might have been apprehensive about before you came here, while you were back at home? Mm-hmm. Um, to me, I would say I was kind of prepped. I knew some expectations, like what to expect of the United States. I think a very typical picture that I had in my mind was like about a typical American diet too, which, you know, it is... It turned out to be, like, not as bad as, like, it is painted in the media. It is not. And I got a chance to live with several families and, um, you know, through, like, seeing different family recipes that they had in their dinner rotations, I was able to pick up on some, you know, things, and I really enjoyed cooking with them. So I, I would say that, like, this is probably one of the things that I was concerned about and, like... Thankfully, that didn't really go by, so I was like, I was thinking about that. But yeah, that was probably the thing I was kind of apprehensive about. What were you afraid of? Like, it was going to be all cheeseburgers or something? I or? guess so, yeah. Like, that was that was my typical, okay. like, just picture of, like, what it was going to be looking like. I'm like, well, I like my vegetables. <laughs> so, yeah, but actually, there's, there's a great variety of stuff here in grocery stores that I did not see in. Uh, Ukraine just because it's geographically not as wide as the United States and so it doesn't have as much fresh and interesting produce from all over the world so that was pretty cool so yeah. I would say that yeah <laughs> Emma what about you what were, what were some things you might have been nervous about before you came here mm, the most nervous part was probably um, 
if my host family, if, if I fit into my host family. I mean, food was also a big issue because, I mean, <laughs> I kind of enjoy fast food and all that stuff. So it was, I was, I was not having a problem with it. But um, yeah, if I fit into my host family, if I get friends in school, I think that was the most important thing. And what some people were asking me before I came here was, are you afraid of like missing your family too much or getting homesick or something? And I was like, well, no, <laughs> I mean, I'm not, when I was younger, I used to be a person that gets homesick really fast, but now I'm definitely not. And my dad used to tell me that um, I'm going to be too busy to be homesick. I'm going to have too to much that. to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. So, yeah, that was. Well, we'll talk about that a little bit. What are some of the things that you do? What are some of your extracurricular activities after school? Um, so in the first three or four months, I did um, basketball. Um, I've never done it before. That's why I was in the freshman team. But still, um, I used to get to experience how to play basketball, even though I was running into the wrong directions. <laughs> and like I mean I did not know what to do but I kind of figured it out and then I was not that bad and now I'm playing tennis so I've played tennis before so that's what I was excited for very cool what about you Vlad you know my thing was a little different I am not a huge sports guy I just you know, I have great appreciation for people who do play sports, and I think that's really cool. But it's just not something that, like, ever stood out to me, really. I've tried different kinds of sports, just nothing really stood out to me. Um, and so I focused on, more on, like, co-curricular and extracurricular activities at Dow. Um, I've been a part of the school newspaper update for the past two academic years. And uh, this year, I'm actually a, got a managing physician. I'm a managing uh, opinion editor. Um, an update and I've really enjoyed that and I've also participated in many other uh, diversity clubs such as student diversity board that was just recently formed here at Dow yeah. so that was pretty cool um, I've done a lot of volunteering as well over the past two years a uh, part of it is it is a requirement of my program to do a certain amount of volunteering hours I think it's 50 hours of community service but I've done a lot more than that because I really found that that was something I really enjoyed, like giving back to your community. And um, I've just really enjoyed, you know, helping out where I could and apply the skills that I already had um, to help our community. So uh, I would say that I focused on that. And the key club at Dow High, which primarily focuses on volunteering, was one of those uh, great places and extracurricular activities that I really found my part. That's awesome. Yeah, so you guys have both kept really, really busy. Yes. <laughs> they're different too, but yeah, they're very busy. The opposite, yes. but yeah, still. For sure. <laughs> I'm glad we got a we got a good cross section of the, yeah. you know, exchange program here for sure. Um Vlad, we, I I've got to we've got to talk about Ukraine a little bit. What is what's going on over there? What what did you leave? Did you was anything happening when you when you left or came came to America? It was probably well before that or just Tell me a little bit about yeah. your experience. Uh, yeah, so uh, a lot of people, when they refer to the war in Ukraine right now, they refer to the um, accelerated um, stage of the conflict that started in February of 2022. However, the actual conflict that is happening on Ukrainian territory, it started back in 2013, 2014, mm -hmm. um, when uh, the Russian Federation enacted some of the territories of Ukraine, particularly the Crimean Peninsula. Uh, I was... Back then, I was in Ukraine. I had actually just been to Crimea like months before that annexation happened. So that was really heartbreaking to see that. But uh, it wasn't as escalated at the time when I was leaving for the United States. So, of course, when I was leaving for the United States, I knew it was going to be just an exchange year. I thought it was going to be just an exchange year. I'll come back home in like May or June of 2022, it will be. Uh, and then as the conflict escalated in February 22 with the full-scale invasion, really nobody till the last minute didn't know what was going to happen. I FaceTimed my friends and family just days before that happened. And, you know, they were walking in the parks and, you know, doing all the fun stuff that they would normally do. So um, there really wasn't a sense that something major was going to be happening. And unfortunately, 
February 24th, uh, early in the morning here, and it was like very well into the midday in Ukraine because of the time zone difference. I woke up to a lot of texts from my family and friends, both from here and from the United States, and from here and from Ukraine, I mean, and, um, you know, with messages of support and uh, messages of what was happening there. And so I contacted some of my family members to, like, ask them if they were all right and if something major was happening. Um, and um, I think that it, it was... Really looking back at that time, I'm really surprised at how well I handled that. I I don't know if it's appropriate to say that about myself, but I believe I was a trooper and I handled it well within the first couple of weeks when my family was still in Kharkiv that had seen some serious shellings and battles. I was presenting in my English classes and in other classes here at Dow as well as other community organizations about what was happening in Ukraine because I felt like it was my way of showing support to my country and it was my way of contributing to the cause and making sure that, you know, I do my part in um, making people, you know, knowledgeable about the topic and making sure that I just have some contribution to what was happening yeah. in Ukraine. I've seen yeah. your presentation. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I kept, kept doing that well after, like, well into the succeeding years as well. How's your family doing? They're well, actually. So my mom is in the United States, which I'm oh, really, good. really happy. She's not in Midland yet, but she is coming for my graduation. And Are then you, your sister, or your mom, or my mom. Okay. And then I have uh, my dad. He's still in Ukraine, okay. um, but he's doing well too. And then I have an older sibling, but he's lived in Europe for a pretty long time. He's in Poland, so okay. he's doing well. Okay, good. Well, thank you for talking about that. I, yes, I really appreciate. It. We were we we're curious about it, and we knew that you had quite a story there and it's uh it's just heartbreaking it's kind of hard to I can imagine it's hard to talk about that but yeah I I'd say definitely pat yourself on the back you are a trooper for getting through that and being so far away from home and and living through that and surviving that for sure um as far as back to the 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 program here in Midland how how might this experience help you for the rest of your academic career I mean, you, you were talking, Vlad, about going to college after this, correct? Yes. So you're so, going to stay a little bit longer, right? right. Yes. Okay. I got into a school in New Jersey where I'm going to be studying international affairs. And that's also a neat story because really it's those presentations that I've done about Ukraine um, that really pushed me toward pursuing that degree and pursuing that career. That's not something I'd considered for a long period of time, but it's just something that I felt like I had succeeded at and I felt like that was something I really could be doing because in a way I was at that time I was the only person in the Midland community who um, had such recent experiences with Ukraine and who had um, such close connections to Ukraine and so I really felt like I was an ambassador of Ukraine to Midland area and I think that was one of the factors that really pushed me to consider um, you know pursuing international affairs as my degree in college and so that's what i'm planning on doing that's awesome very cool congratulations Thank on getting you. into college Thank you. emma what about you what how is how do you think this this experience here will kind of shape up the the rest of your academic career so um i don't think it would give me like a big advantage in jobs or something but my dad used to tell me yeah so um i mean it looks good if i can say okay i was doing a year abroad and also it helped me improving like my English skills and just getting experiences and getting a little bit more independent and take over responsibility for myself by myself and yeah I don't yeah I don't think I will have an advantage in my jobs when I look for them I don't even know what I want to do later that's Kind of a big issue because... That's okay. I didn't know until this summer. Yeah, so that's, have, that's totally fine. I have no idea <laughs> what I'm going to do. So. I know that feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I would say that it also is a great just life experience and life advice that you can get, at least for me personally, just seeing how despite the cultural differences, the obvious cultural differences between Ukraine and the U.S., it was just really neat to see how, you know, there's still families there, they still laugh and cry, they still have their problems, and they still, like, proceed with their normal days, they have their ways to spend vacation. It was just a really neat perspective that um, just, you know, provided me with that 
view that although we are different and we speak different languages, we are so similar. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I think that's one of the major takeaways for me is that like culturally different, but still yet so similar and still yet yeah. so just like human. Right. Well, like Emma was talking about being homesick. I have no, like how have you been here for so long and not been homesick? Oh yeah. 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 Oh. So I've been busy. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that that really helped. Sure. You know, I'm just really thankful that, like, in the modern day and age, we have FaceTime and we can chat and do all those things because mm-hmm. I've seen videos of like exchange students from like the 50s or 60s, and like the only way of communicating with their yeah. families was just writing letters yeah. that would take like you know months and months. <laughs> I'm like, I yeah, that would be hard. Um, and you know, I'm just really thankful that. Um, despite the fact that my friends, right, I'm so far away from my friends from Ukraine, I'm so far from right now, but, and we don't talk as much anymore just because of the time zone difference and, you know, busy schedules and stuff like that, and, you know, your life goes on, their life goes on, and it's kind of separate, but I'm so thankful that I was able to retain that close connection with my friends in Ukraine, even though we were so far apart. I think that's something that really helped with that, and, of course, there has been times, um, when I felt homesick and when I missed my hometown or my family, obviously. But I think it was always good to keep in mind that whatever experiences I'm having here in the U.S. is a great perspective, is something that has great benefits. And, um, you know, I had great uh, support system as well. My host families, I have a different, I've had several different host families and all of them, they've been great supports for me and uh, I think that's really important when you have people to turn to when you have people that support you and go through things with you and basically they are your family Um, it's it is great and it really really helps with homesick what an awesome approach very good positive attitude I I like that both of you now Emma you were talking about language a little bit before it's I know this wasn't (laughs) one of the written down questions so maybe I'm putting you on the spot talk about that a little bit how how good or bad was your English before you got here I mean I wouldn't say my English was really bad because I mean yeah I could talk normally but I think it got I got a lot fluent more fluent and my vocabulary increased a lot um just do saying normal things and I don't know I think one of the first words I've learned was raccoon (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, it was just, um, we were driving and then there was like a raccoon on the side of the street and I was like, oh, there's a, and then I was like, what is it? And then, <laughs> nice. What is it? Like, it's a, it's a normal like animal, but I've never thought about what, what it is, what is it in English? And yeah. then I, I will always remember that this was my first <laughs> word learning. But yeah, do they do they not have uh, raccoons in Germany or? We have, but we you don't see them. Okay. So <laughs> I guess I don't know. Yeah, and it's I guess that's that's excellent point actually. Um, <laughs> Midland has a lot of wildlife. Yeah, in the yeah, city. exactly. Like, by wildlife, I mean like t- t- <laughs> I mean like turkeys and stuff. To me, yeah. a boy from the city, like I would like pigeons and like other birds are pretty much your selection. That's all you get in the city. <laughs> and here in Midland, I saw turkeys. I saw deer just crossing the street. Yeah. I'm like, what is happening? Uh-huh. And it's so cool. And yes, I, I so that's what I call wildlife. But yeah, it was. That's really well, fun. <laughs> that's true, especially over here by Dow High, right, right by exactly. Northwood. Crossing Main Street yep, and stuff yeah. there, you have like a right. family of turkeys right. that are yeah. right. all right. the time. And rabbits and stuff yep, too. And, and you're like, wow. And, yeah. and deer and yeah. all kinds stuff of stuff. that you would only see at yeah. the zoo right. in Yeah, yeah exactly. Right there. <laughs> exact same in Germany. Yeah. You would never, I mean, you can see them, but they are, they are kind of invisible. They're somewhere yeah. in the forest and you don't see them <laughs> further so. in the country yes yeah. right but not so. in big cities for they're, sure they're not coming out to hang out with <laughs> no. civilization uh-uh. so noisy no. and yeah, yeah busy well don't feel bad because my father was from new york city and oh. when he moved to michigan <laughs> he was like look there's like he'd tell my mom there's real life cows yeah. those are oh, real oh horses yeah we've never seen them before right? oh my God. Just not around so yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh tell me a little bit about some of the highlights or the the uh, things you've learned about while being here. Emma, let's start with you. Um, 
I think the first thing I've learned was using my debit card because I <laughs> I didn't know how because I haven't had one in Germany. So the first thing I did kind of was um, asking my host sister how I use my debit card. And then, yeah, she told me it was not hard. That was one of the easiest things ever. But still, and yeah, in general, I just learned a lot of the culture, a lot about the culture and um, the food. What, what was the first thing you bought on your debit card while you were here in America? Oh, I don't know if I remember. I think <laughs> probably Starbucks. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, that's, I've... Well, assimilating nicely then yeah. into American culture. <laughs> Very good. Um, and yeah, I've learned a lot of the, about the culture and yeah. um, Michigan. And when I first came here, I had to learn all the 52 states and where they are. And I know that's kind of the, f- the 50 knowledge. states? 50, 50 plus DC plus. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm sometimes, no, I'm really so not right, good no. at this, but still. <laughs> that's um, okay. <laughs> I didn't mean to put you on the spot. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. <laughs> I'm just, and yeah, so. I've learned a lot more about America because also in Germany we don't, I mean, we have a lot of stuff over the world in our, um, in school that we learn, but here I learned a lot more about specifically America, and yeah, my host family showed me a lot of recipes and all the stores because Mm -hmm. they have a lot of different stores over here, and I was at Mekina Island. Oh, nice. I learned about fudge. And that fudge is really good, but I still don't know what fudge is. <laughs> I don't know. I it's just, okay. Nobody does. I but it tastes good. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I was like, when I started to explain my family what fudge is, I was like, um, yeah, so it's chocolate. Wait, no, it's not chocolate. It's something else. It's like cookie dough, but it's not cookie dough. It's, like, it's, it's pure happiness yeah, is what it is. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> it's just sugar and just, yeah. It's <laughs> just so <sighs> yummy. It is. It really yeah. is. So, I don't know. I've learned. I think, yeah, I've learned. And and also, what I've learned was how the system, the school system in America works. Like, you have the same classes every day. That was really weird because in Germany I have every day a different class. Okay. I mean, not a different class, but you have probably math on Monday and Thursday and not every day in the week. Kind of like college schedule. Yeah, like exactly. Most, yeah. And it was... Sometimes really boring to have the same classes every day. <laughs> and then, yeah, that was really, really interesting. Yeah, so. I would have loved that, to have math like only once or twice <laughs> a year. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, math is great. Uh, know, but for, those for all our like math it. teachers out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about you, Vlad? What are, what, what are some of the highlights, some of the experiences that you'll... I mean, yeah. you've had a lot of time right. here, so. Yeah, so uh, back in Ukraine, actually, I made a point of trying to, like, remember and learn all the 50 states and be able to list them all and even, like, the postal abbreviations, so AK for Alaska oh. and stuff like that. And so, I'm going to learn 52, so <laughs> yes. you got to catch <laughs> up, buddy. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> right. Uh, but, yeah, so I made a point of learning that, but back then I really didn't, no, and that's the thing that I, that's the major takeaway from my American experience really is that it's not just 50 states and like they're, the only thing that like is different in each one of them is their name. Really each state or each like cultural region is so drastically different. I mean, my experience would have been a lot different had I been in the, at, in the West Coast or maybe in the South or East Coast and Midwest, I enjoy it. I like, I love Midwest. I'm going to really miss Midwest in New Jersey. So, yeah, but I guess this is the thing that I had never known and I probably wouldn't have known had I not, um, have I not been here for such a long time is like really how different just, you know, smaller uh, regional differences there are and regional cultures in the United States within one country there are. Because the United States is such a big country when you compare it to Ukraine or Germany. Ukraine is approximately the size of Texas by area. 
And so, yes, we do. We do have regional differences as well that I was well knowledgeable of. But yeah, for some reason, I have not given a thought that like the U.S. would have had such different, right. you know, smaller, you know, community culture sort of thing. It's it's really cool. Well, even from state to state, you cross right. the border from Michigan into Ohio, and there's like this huge rivalry, right? Yeah. You know? So <laughs> yeah. I'm sure, which I'm sure you've experienced and probably think is ridiculous. But, <laughs> you know. <laughs> A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, Vlad, you talked a little bit about your plans after high school. You're going to to, uh, to New Jersey to go to college, correct? Yep. Yep. Okay. Emma, what about you? What are you, any? Um, I don't know what to do, okay. but um, <laughs> my parents are completely fine with me first just doing a gap year or yeah. where I can travel because I literally have no idea what I'm going to do after school. Also, I don't know how to attend a college if I don't even know what area or what theme I'm going to do. Nothing wrong with that. That's, yeah. Yeah. Nothing so, wrong with that. That's yeah. smart. I yeah. just decided I had my major like four or five months ago, and it just came to me. Like I had not like given a thought to yeah. it, and it was just like, hey, you're doing this. And I was like, okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> I guess I can do that. I had not even considered international affairs as one of potential majors. It just came down to me. Well, you're lucky when it, when it comes to you like that, right? right? But, right. but, you know, it, it doesn't... It's not that easy for everybody, especially right. when you come right out of school, sure. you know, yes. or you feel pressure to do one yeah. thing versus another. Absolutely. And, you know, but yeah, I could definitely see international affairs with you, for sure. <laughs> Thank you. You, know, you seem, to, <laughs> seem to enjoy it. And, yeah, that's cool. So, so far, so good. <laughs> right, right. So, um, let's talk about friends. Like, how, like, what was it like oh, me, yeah. making friends? I mean, especially if there's, like, a language, like, a little bit of a language barrier. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it was... Um, because my vocabulary was not the best but still um I feel like making friends in America was a lot different than in Germany because when you go into your classes first of all in Germany we have one main class and we're going to stay in this, this class almost the whole time and only the teachers switch mm -hmm. and we stay in the same classroom almost the whole time um so that's that was really different to go to different classes and then to see a lot more people and I kind of got into a friend group through my host sister because she's my age and so I got in her friend group so I've had friends from the beginning on but making my own friends was it was not really hard but I think the first time I've really like catched up on friends was through basketball my basketball team, I've got a lot of friends in there. And then the only thing that I thought was like here, when you um, have meet like new people, they talk to you in class, but it's never, it was never like, oh, let's meet private. Let's, let's come over to my house. Yeah. That's what we do in Germany. Let's go, let's do that, let's do that. But here it's more like, yeah, see you tomorrow in school. <laughs> so I was it like, takes uh, time to develop those sure. deeper relationships. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I haven't had a lot to do on the weekends most of the time because I was like, huh, they don't. I see them in school, so. <laughs> right. And in Germany, I was busy all weekend, all the time. Mm -hmm. I was going out with my friends, and here it was just a little bit different to only see them in school. I mean, I could have asked them, "Do you wanna?" See me private. Yeah, on my you know, you're always yeah. feeling yeah. nervous about asking first, right? Yeah. And like someone's gonna make exactly. that first move, right? And like you just don't want it to be yourself, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that was an that issue. So. What was it about? Let me go back to basketball. What What was it about basketball that you wanted to try? That like, did somebody <laughs> from your host family? Um, were they on a team or anything? Or actually, some I know my host sister. She has played basketball at one point, but. I think it's been a year or something, and she wasn't in the team this year. Okay. But um, the other exchange students, that was actually the first time I've really had friends that I meet private to, the other exchange students, because they used to meet their friends private. So yeah. we, I've met them a lot of times. But um, What was it about basketball that made you want to – why did you want to play basketball? What was oh, the yeah. appeal there? Yeah, I remember. So <laughs> – um, basically, our exchange student asked me, yeah, I was going to sign up for basketball. Do you want to do it too? And I was like, 
Sure, I can try it out. I've never done it before, but a lot of my friends in Germany play basketball. Yeah. Mostly only boys, but when I go back, I can play a little bit more basketball cool. because. So I was like, okay, that was, yeah, that was good. Yeah. So I was like, let's try it. Gotcha. Okay. Now, Vlad, you're not into sports, of course, but that's so. How how do you get hooked up with some of those after school clubs like Key Club and stuff? What what inspired you to want to get involved with those? You know, just listening to the announcements and like, hey, there's this club meeting today and I would go there and see if I like it or not or if it's like just if the atmosphere is right and I feel like um, the people that I've seen in my classes are in there and if there are, be like might stick around and come to the second meeting and third meeting and then just right. becomes habitual sort of thing. I would say that in my experience, I would say that the Ukrainian model of friendship is kind of like what Emma described um, about the U.S. is more of like you meet at school and not really much yeah. besides. Like so that was kind of like more similar I would mm -hmm. say. But also what really was helpful to me was making friendships outside of school as well. I mean I made great friends in here at school as well because journalism you spend a lot of time working on the paper because you come after hours to work on it so you know you hang out with people for quite a long time there and then you might as well go someplace else and do something fun but also what really helped is finding people to hang out with outside of your school community mm -hmm. as well um, such as I've made some great friends at my youth group here in the U.S. as well and that was great too. So. That's interesting how you guys mentioned that about friends, how, like yeah. how it's much different in your home yeah. country versus here. Yeah, and I think um, it's a lot easier in Germany to find friends out of school because if you want to do a sport like tennis or basketball, then you have to sign up in a club private. Like we don't have that sports kind of school. sports in school. Yeah, oh, um, nice. you have okay. to do that private. Um, so you have to sign up in a club. Um, I'm in the club with my dad, so I met a lot of friends there that are not on my school. So I think that's we have kind of uh, different opportunities to make friends out of school, besides school. So gotcha. All right, I'm gonna put you on the spot here for a second. Who do you have a favorite teacher, or favorite class? Um. So I, I. <laughs> Um, my favorite class, I would say, is probably art because it's the most easy class. And I think the most impressive, impressive teacher was Mr. Fry in my literature class because he's just, he can talk so good. And after all the time I was here, I saw him without a mask the first time <laughs> because he is wearing a mask all, uh, all hour. And I, used, I had to uh, retake a test. So I went in the class after sixth hour, and he was not wearing his mask. And I was like, that was a completely <laughs> totally new person. person. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so that was fun. Um, and I think my favorite teacher is probably Miss G, because she's my sociology teacher. Miss G? Yeah, she's really nice. What about you, Vlad? You know, I really should give a shout out to teachers here at Dow because they're great. Like, I really, mm -hmm. I, I wish I could name like one class that I've enjoyed taking here, but I really can. And I think I also was like in a nice position where I had a lot of my um, gen ed requirements for graduation kind of filled with my credits from Ukrainian school. So I was given an opportunity to take a lot of electives. So maybe that's why I found it so fun and engaging. But yeah, I've totally enjoyed a lot of my classes, particularly in government. I'm currently in government yeah. and, uh, well, duh. I'm yeah. like, International you know, affairs. right, exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> that's probably why. But no, there's great teachers. I've enjoyed the IB English course. It's a two year English course offered here at Dow. And IB English one is, um, I Pretty sure every junior here at Dow takes it, and then you can either do IB English two or take different English paths here. But I did did do did sign up for IB English two, and um, actually went through all the like IB examination for it, which that part was not fun. But I have really enjoyed it, um, you know, getting to know how to analyze text and. Uh, IB English really teach, and IB program generally, IB classes, they really prep you for those deeper levels of analysis that you're going to see later on in college or in your career life. So, but yeah, just a major shout out to classes and teachers here at Dow because they're, they're <laughs> awesome. Yeah. 
Very yeah. good. That's good to hear. So if we're giving shout outs, then <laughs> uh, I, I would like to give shout outs to my um, basketball coaches because I was really bad and they made me kind of, kind of okay. <laughs> so also Marnie, I think if I, I really would have to say who my favorite teacher is, I don't have a class with her, but she was, oh wait. No, first semester I've had team sports in second hour, and she was our team sports um, teacher, and who she was, was also who was that again? Marnie. Marnie. Uh, Marnie Williams. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And um, yeah, so that was that was fun all the time, and she was also the coach of the JV basketball team, and um, Nick. Um, they are. Uh, he was the. Um, freshman team coach so yeah. yeah they kind of got me through the season of basketball <laughs> so yeah I gotta play basketball for a while to get good at it so yeah, yeah. uh-huh yeah don't beat yourself down on that but basketball I, can be tough I thought that you play basketball with just throwing the ball to the next person that you can see <laughs> but there's actually a structure behind that like yeah. you have to know all the when he yells, I don't know, Chicago, you have to know what to do. And I didn't know that because I was like, what is going on? Everyone kind of knew what their position is. And I was standing right in the middle of the field being like, oh, wait, everyone, <laughs> everyone is doing anything. Okay, so let's just pretend I know what to do. So and then I was running any directions and it was wrong. Well, Way fake off. It, fake it until you make it, right? Yeah, so uh -huh. yeah. I, yeah that mm -hmm. was my life just pretending <laughs> I know what to do so <laughs> there's a lot of strategy in yeah, basketball. yeah exactly be, yeah. I think that's why I think like I enjoy ping pong that's probably one of those sports that I do enjoy what, some people call it table tennis some people call oh, it yeah, ping pong yeah, yeah. Yep. and like because you know it's a pretty straightforward yeah. right. and I'm yeah, pretty good at it so <laughs> I'm like the concept's straightforward ah, I can do that <laughs> right right yeah, it's just a one-on-one -on -one sport. Right. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. Versus a team part, and the team part is sometimes hard because you know you like it's not just you working just for yourself. It's like you actually like contributing to the team, which you know sometimes you get more anxious about because people rely on you, right? So yeah, there's strategy in basketball, the sure. triangle sure. offense, and all that stuff. That's yeah, that still goes over all my head a little bit too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. All right. Well, I think that is our show for today. I'd like to thank Vlad and Emma for being here. You guys were fantastic. Sure, Just, no problem. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for having <laughs> us. Yeah. That wasn't so bad, right? Even with... No, you know, no? it was not bad. Too I bad? mean, <laughs> I've had some language issues, but it's fine. Oh, you were fine. You guys did <laughs> yes. perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, no problem. So we'd like to thank all of our listeners around the district, around the country, and around the world for tuning in. We have launched a district Instagram page, and you can find, you can find us... Find and follow us by... See, I have language issues, too. And yeah. I, I've been speaking this language for four years. Let me just read off the... I'm going to blame it on my contacts. Right? Yeah. If you have a story idea, a photo op, or an event you'd like to promote, you can email us at communications at midlandps.org. Thanks again for listening to MPS Connections, and I think we're done for the summer. So, yeah, we'll see you guys in the fall. Aww, All right? Sure. Yeah. Aww. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank have you. Do you have an idea for a podcast? Email us at communications at midlandps.org.